Oh, excellent. I'm talking about StarCraft. In fact, you know what I'm doing? I'm introducing a player because in the upper right, he's for Basilisk. We got to meet him uh, at Atlanta. That was awesome. And the rest of the Basilisk crew, it's Trigger. That enough of a tune in for you? Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty good. I realize that you are super loud for me, but I think my limiter was keeping you within the realm of human auditory enjoyment, hopefully. So we'll see. Uh, should be all good. All right. And over here on the bottom left side, the opponent, the Brazilian beast. He's a bit of a proxy European lately. Been over there uh, running logistics for Team Liquid, semi-retiring from pro gaming, coming back to pro gaming, being good at other non-StarCraft games. He's just an all-around beast gamer. It's Kelezer. Citizen of the world, right? Like at this point, he's just everywhere and killing it everywhere. So it works out. Yeah, he's a real beast. Um, I, I always like it as well because he, of course, came to fame with proxy three racks Reaper and mass mass Reapers and very cheesy builds back in the day. But he steadily built himself to be a very strong, well-rounded player and actually made it to a he's made it to a world championship before a top 16 BlizzCon um, before he did decide to go to university and, and do that. And the crazy thing is, his skill level never really dropped off too far from there, uh, even though he'd miss some tournaments because he'd be busy studying and, and working with his career and stuff. Killer an eternally top tier gamer. Unfortunately, the gateway in the natural. That's going to be nasty, man. That's going to come in. He's not building a reactor. He's skipping production on the barracks right now. Oh, this is so hard. Yeah, this is just such a trigger thing to do to you. Whether it is your standard max packs type of build or whether going more classic style. Again, this is more max packs in this game. This is something that you just have to be afraid of if you're running oh! into... Oh! The Zealot, he, blew, he didn't rally it from the gateway. It rallied to the backside. He had to recall his Zealot home. What a disaster, B.O. Oh my oh, God, no. man. And now it's scouted too, so the Marine's gonna see this. I mean, it's not gonna kill the gateway, certainly, but knowing what's happening is nine tenths of a hold. So SCVs are gonna get pulled as the second Zealot arrives. At this point, it almost feels like it's over. The, the natural's not gonna get delayed at all. Oh man, that is such a bummer. And he's gonna get at least one SCV with a Zealot, but dude, bit of mining time in one Zealot, not what you're hoping for. Now, Kelazur does not have a bunker on the high ground. And that Marine is staying on the low ground a very dangerous amount of time. I get you're a pro gamer and you got good game sense, Kelazur, but you're running out of time to run back to the high ground. You need to get back up there right now. And he's waited too long. That Marine is forfeit, as will be the SCV if it doesn't get out of there gotta be real careful getting lured into a fight down here this is not good he's got to go back and defend the high ground with that widow mine well the marine does stay alive <laughs> killers are just has those god gamer senses that you were talking about and with the widow mine yes you're not really breaking that not with a zealot not with a stalker yes trigger can commit more he can build a second stalker sacrifice the zealot and maybe use that as a way to break onto the high ground but that doesn't seem to be what he wants to do pig he's already got a stargate up behind this Oracle's on the way. And the question now is whether he uses that, those three units, the Zealot, the Stalker, the Oracle, maybe something else to try to pair together, do damage in the main natural at the same time. But for right now, yeah, there's just not a lot of damage potential. And Kelezer, that SCV that scouted things earlier, well, it's got a starport on the right side. He's got a tech lab on the way. It's going to be Banshees. It's going to be tanks. Kelezer wasting no time in punishing the hubris of Trigger. Oh, that Oracle, do not fly into the Widow Mine. Do not fly into the Widow Mine. There's no anti-air trigger. Oh no, that's so bad for trigger. Because the thing is, there's no mobile anti-air. He could have killed the Marines in the main, got, got a bunch of SCV damage. And that's kind of necessary because when you're playing Oracle Twilight, you don't have a fantastic answer to surprise Banshees, especially if you don't realize they're coming. And obviously Phoenix Oracle shuts it down once you know it's there, but if you're going Oracle Blink and then your Oracles start dying, oh, the Banshees can absolutely wreck you. As can the Marine Tank Mind Push. Second Oracle is going to rally across this map right now. He's trying to go Twilight, third base, all the things for the longer game. But right now, Kelezer is going to take the fight over to Trigger. And Trigger is going to be hard pressed to hold this one off uh, without getting distracted so much that the Banshees just kill him. And the worst part about this is, well, Banshees are getting cloaked, and it's not going to be there for the first fight necessarily, but when you're only on single Oracle, that's your detection. It really does not feel good. So there we go. The pressure at the front. Four SCVs have fallen already. He's going to get a little bit more, but it's three stalker. Pick, there's no shield battery in the natural. There's nothing that knocks this down. The tanks get good shots. Widow mines, they do even better. And there's a Banshee in the main base. It doesn't even have to oh. do anything. It just sits there and kills. It stands there menacingly, and Trigger just dies. Yeah, sure, the tank's fallen. Good job, Trigger. 
unfortunately the economic damage feels pretty insurmountable and did oh he got the oracle the oracle's dead too yeah no detection to, to follow this one up banshee's cloak finishes in the main at the perfect time and trigger right now but uh, man what what a perfect opening for trigger into just uh, absolute hot mess i'm talking about you know hot spurts of, of wet uh, bowel evacuation that's that's really what this early game was for trigger he had it lined up dude the unscouted gateway in the natural and then that first zealot rallied to the back and then he flies his oracle right into the widow mine you know it's a, a, a real cascade of unfortunate events this has thrown away what should have been a massive advantage in the early game in map one Oh no, the Oracle Revelation gets committed on it too, on the Banshee, and it still gets out. So the Banshee's still alive, they're sharking behind. We're gonna see this pylon go down as well as the Zealot, and what does Trigger have? He's got a Stalker, he's got one of each thing, although that one of mine, that was a lot of friendly fire there, so that does kill all the Marines, and it gives, I'm not gonna say him at least on life, but at least delayed death, a bit of unlife. Well, you know you're struggling when a single Cyclone has no answer in your base. It's just like, okay, we got to pull the probes, I guess. Cyclone gets up to seven kills before it goes down, and another one rallies in. Uh, of course, this is all but game over. The Phoenix and the Oracle finally clean a Banshee up rather smoothly in the main, but there's still one in the natural. Cyclone and the Marines there continuing to be a pain in the buttocks. Phoenix is going to pick up the Cyclone. Banshee's almost out of energy. It'll die very quickly to that Phoenix. The Phoenix can just get one or two shots. It does take it down. I always love these small scale unit interactions in TVP. I think they're one of the funnest parts of the matchup, but when you lose your Oracle in any matchup without doing anything, it's a disaster. Uh, you add that to the Zealot proxy that did nothing. It's yeah, it's 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 it's, it's like, man, that's a 300 resource unit. It's almost like losing a Void Ray. People look at the Oracle, sometimes they forget just how expensive it is, you know? It's not just like losing a single Phoenix or a single Mutalisk, it is so much worse. Well, it's not just one Oracle going down, it's that one falls as well. Last ditch effort from Trigger outside. And he, you know what, he's killing the tanks. The Cyclone's still alive, unfortunately, but the Purple's not as problem. I I'm clutching a straws here. There are no straws to clutch. Trigger falls, Kelizer takes game one, and Pig, you know, this is just one of those games where I'm really gra glad it is a best of three because, I mean, that game went wrong from the start. Trigger didn't have anything go right for him, but at least he's got another shot. You know, he's got another game that he can play. It's Trigger. And of course, his opponent in the upper right in the red. He had everything turn his way in game one. It's Kelser. All right, we'll see what Kelly brings out in map number two. Um, you know, it, it's interesting because I often think of the Terran as the build decider, but uh, you can you can be defensive. You know, you don't have to do a super aggressive opening. It's of course meta at the moment for most Terrans to go double gas opening. is going to do that. He's already rallied his second SCV out of the command center here to the, uh, the refinery. So he is going to do the very quick tech opening and that gives you a lot of options. I would say that this is not the most economic opening for Terran. But what it does is it basically says, hey, guess what, Protoss? I have unlimited options. Have fun figuring out which one it is that I'm committing to. So forces Trigger to walk the tightrope, work on his scouting really well, try to get reads off what little information he can glean and, and stitch together some sort of plan to make it past the six or seven minute mark. And isn't it interesting, too, that this is the Terran response? Because, you know, for the the majority of the summer the story has been wow protoss players are getting more tech or more tech light they're getting more aggressive more map control then, then they get tech later on we're talking zealot openers things like that and it's very easy to say well my my opponent's just doing this a lot i'm going to turtle i'm going to be greedier because i'm going to get their the tech that they won't have but instead players like beyond players like hero marine which i put at the forefront of this evolution they're they're just leaning further into the aggression oh yeah you're hitting at seven minutes let me hit you at six like this is gonna be even better let's have fun yeah i've been grinding a lot of protoss on the ladder and it, it's constantly that thing where i smack down someone's aggression and i'm like oh, you're gonna play greedy now and they're like no just gonna all in even harder like <laughs> the number of just crazy aggression aggressive terran attacks and the thing is like I'm part of my mind is still stuck in the mindset of like six months or a year ago where I'm like, well, you guys are playing like idiots. This is not a good way to play StarCraft. And yeah, if the map pool's big enough, that is kind of applies, but you make the map small enough, you make them cramped enough, you give some good drop angles and dead space for the Terran to work. Suddenly the crazy aggressive plans work great. You got Waterfall, you got Moon Dance, Inside Out, some of the most dangerous maps in this map pool for those dynamic openings. So 
definitely a scary map for Trigger and uh, why he'd be super frustrated about giving away the last one. Yeah, that certainly did not feel good. Now, the big deal, though, actually, Pig, when we talk about this, I was I talked to Trigger and really the Basilisk people a lot during uh, during Atlanta because they're just awesome. But one thing Trigger was talking to me about was the Basilisk team, uh, they have him working with a sports psychologist because one of the things that, you know, I think we can, when we look at Trigger, well, his onstage experience is lacking. You know, he, he does so well online or when he's not on stage, then he goes and, he gets on stage and just that pressure makes it a little harder for him. But if there was one benefit we can talk about is, uh, well, hold that thought because three Reapers are arriving. Let's talk us get a good shot. So they're going to force that back. The one big benefit of doing that means that you go, you get bopped around, slapped around in a game. Well, hopefully that that training that he has and living with me as well means he's going to be able to shake this off rather easily. And for now, stalkers show up, grenade and shield batteries. Keep everything alive. Learning from his mistakes. Game one shield batteries everywhere very nicely done yeah i think the the psychology is very big in starcraft the mental game and one versus one competition chess tennis a lot of things is huge i uh, i would actually say that trigger i think is probably one of the more solid players mentally just the fact is that he's so late to starcraft i mean nina met trigger randomly in an arcade lobby like three or four years ago when he was a diamond player and he's come so far since then so here we go big fight in the middle of the map Stalker does go down, but I think that's a, a perfectly fine trade when you take out a Reaper and a Hellion for it as well. So not too bad there, or two Reapers, in fact, sorry, went down for it. Um, nice little attempt to counter pressure, but you got to watch out here is Trigger. Two Hellions and a Reaper could dive in and do big mineral damage. So I like that he's being somewhat conservative with his unit movements. Uh, just to wrap up that point before more action starts, I think uh, Trigger's just so, so green to the game in general. And I, I get he's been around for a while, but... It just takes so many years to get anywhere near the the experience level of a lot of our veterans. They are so so much more experienced that I feel like the 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 you know buckling in live tournaments under pressure, different environments. It's something he is getting a lot better at, and who knows, maybe that is part of the sports psychologist. But I actually have very high hopes for Trigger because he has shown great control under pressure, but he's going to need that right now. Two tanks of Banshee, a lot of Marines and a Hellion. Good micro so far. He's got a few observers, doesn't want to throw those away. Cloak did not get upgraded in this game, but nice blink backs, and both observers do end up falling. Good pick off for Kalazur. His reinforce is very fragile, though. This is not a huge push. Yeah, the unfortunate thing there, Trigger F2s, two Observers and the Stalker go down because he's controlling, well, the army at the front. And you talked about the reinforcements going down, that much is true, but on the same margin, on the same idea, this third base is forfeit. Bunkers are going down. I, I don't know that Trigger's going to be able to hold this, but he's moving down the ramp trying, just loses the Stalker for it, but... Look at these stalkers on the right side. He has an idea. He wants this to happen, but the immortal, it's already so damn low. In fact, it's just dead. The tank oh. falls as well, but the stalkers are there enough at the end of days. The tank will fall. Banshee should fall here as well with one more tap. And it was ugly pig, but it seems like this hold's going to be enough. The, well, with the rally arriving, nah. second tank. Maybe, no, actually not. Yeah. This yeah, is not it's enough. So it's so close, but that one SCV there getting that bunker up, and it's like, oh no. Because look, you'll get the tank, but he loses another two stalkers. Might even lose another one here. The Marines causing so much extra damage, and that's just gonna gonna cascade it, right? The rally, bit too big on this short map, trying to go double forge behind it. You know what they say, just play like hero. And uh Hero does like to go double forge when he's being two base all in in grand final game seven, so. Apparently, we're all learning from him here as Trigger in a desperate situation is trying to get the double upgrades out. Uh, it's looking rather horrendous. And man, if that SCV managed to finish that other bunker, that would be absolutely ridiculous. The Reaper from the early game is still alive. What the hell? I mean, hey, you know what? It has those combat drugs. It stays alive. But you know, you know what? Okay, this bunker. Oh, no. The stalker gets Miss Micro. I was going to say the bunker shouldn't get up. Stalker's on it. And... I mean, okay, pros are gonna get full here. I, it's just amazing. How the hell did he get the bunker up anyway? I mean, it's, it's over now. It's finally held. But like, wait, is he still rallying Banshees? What the hell, Bio? What, what's he doing? I thought there'd be Stimmons and whatnot on the way. Is he just literally... Kelazur is committing more to this than we ever see. He's also gone to 55 SCVs on two commands and is behind it. Kelazur's drunk right now. I think he thought he won the game because what he's doing behind this makes zero sense. It might just barely win since he was so far ahead. But honestly, this is one of the more nonsense follow-ups I've seen so far today. Win by the Banshee, die by the Banshee, I guess. I mean, he's getting good probe damage at the end of this pressure. So yeah, they got that one going for you. Uh, trigger, yes, technically he's on three bases, but 
the economy is not at three base setup. The Kelazos just missing a third command center. It's, it's just ridiculous. He's here. He's starting an engineering bay. He's starting stim and shields. I mean, he's still way ahead. But it's like, dude, you've got literally 30 workers on your natural minerals. Like, this is obscene. And that's going to mine out really fast. He needs to build a third command center. Otherwise, Trigger's whole game plan is like, just survive for a little bit and you'll be okay. And I know that sounds silly because he's so far down in the material. It's just the upgrade stuck for Kelazur. And this is the right call. Just keep attacking. Just keep attacking as Kelazur. You've got to finish him in the near future because your economy suck. Right, the big deal is there's no shield battery at the third base. It's on the way. And once that happens, that really will be locked down. But for right now, we do have Trigger. He blinks forward, trying to get the tanks, trying to get the Banshees, but they're alive for the moment. But still, we don't have, wait, we what don't have we stim. Watching? What are we watching? Non-speed non zealots? Zealots with no shoes up against Marines with no stims or shields. <laughs> it's amazing. This game's hilarious. <laughs> and Killers are still like third command centers are for cucks. Finally, he puts one down up in the main base. Oh my lord. Oh. Uh, legendary, legendary play I, from him. How many bad cheeses he lost this game? Three so far. Oh my god. I mean, Pig, technically, you don't need a third command center. You can just float your main over. I mean, th these are the big brain Terran plays that uh, <laughs> 2015 has, has given to us. But Trigger is so confident in his hold, despite everything that's happened. His fourth base halfway done. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the problem now is is Stim Shields plus one kick in, but he's got one one. Oh, and but charge. the SCV pull. Oh, SCV pull, I think, is it enough of a buffer? I think if Trigger had started backstabbing, he might be able to drag this out. Oh, he's going to try and pick off, like, the tanks and then pull back. And that, you know, the stims aren't super healable. There's only two medevacs with not that much energy. Battery overcharge is always huge in these sort of scenarios. He puts it on. Zealots do need to pull way back for that. Let the stalkers do their work. Oh, there's still two tanks up. That's a problem. Yeah, Zealots can't get on top of it either. But now, okay, finally the SCVs are gone. The buffer's not there anymore. One tank is going to go down. The trigger's got to back up. But this actually should do it. There no, there's no splash, right? There was no backstabbing like you talked about. Trigger got a fourth base instead of five extra zealots, and that really will be the end of it. He's fought long and hard, and the hold was kind of insane. In fact, he canceled his plus one attack. He needs the money right now. Tank is going to go down to the probes are pulled. Does Trigger have another hold in him, Pig? Is this going to happen the boys, again? The boys! The boys, man! He blows the conch, and he says, uh, probie boys are... Uh, they pull out their tasers and they actually do some decent work. He only loses seven to be still up 10 workers. <laughs> if Trigger wins this game, I dub him King of Protoss, Lord of the Scrappy Games. I mean, he kind of pooped the, sh pooped the bed a little bit in game one. But in game two, he's doing a glorious attempt to defend from a disastrous position. Stalkers get a medevac on their retreat. Kelazur is now going towards uh, Widow Mines, Armory. Third base is landed. But... The supplies are still very, very close. The Stalkers and the Zealots with right micro might be able to get in here and do some big damage. Great Widow Mine. Yeah, that's a bit unfortunate. That does mitigate a lot of this pressure. And the medevac count that was so low earlier that meant that these stims were so expensive, not quite as true. But finally, Pig, supplies are starting to somewhat equalize. At least in the army supply, it's only eight supply now. And it seems like Kelezer is, is backing up. He's got his third base. He's, he's letting up on the pressure for the moment, and that means Trigger can absolutely hold down that drone key. Four drones at a time. Excuse me, four probes at a time. Chrono those at. His economy is going to start exploding. And I guess the one saving grace for Kelezer is that Trigger canceled his attack upgrade to try to make sure that last hold, and he got it. But in the balance of things, if I'm a Protoss player here, I feel like I'd prefer the attack upgrade instead. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, armor is great for zealots. It is very good, right? They are two thirds, two thirds hit points, so only one third shields. Uh, so armor's not bad, but definitely for the archons that are coming in now, that'll be big. And archons are going to be very necessary. Now there is an observer out, which is very important. Sees this army coming. A lot of widow mines in that army, which are scary for a mass zealot player. Trigger. He's looking ready to jump on this army. If he can swarm over it, that could work out. He's just got to be wary of those widow mines. He's got to pull back and do a spready. Okay, well, the Widow Mines, they all go off on the same combo Zealots and decent amount of friendly fire. So maybe not the best spread, but Trigger, figure, you're taking this fight. You got to back up here, my friend. But uh, maybe he's going for it. Medivacs, they're going to be the target. Chasing. Yeah, it's no. It's a good pullback. That's a really good pullback. Look how many Zealots are weak. If Trigger can heal those up, that'll be helping. Um, he kind of needs to hold position in the middle of the map to keep Kelazur back and try to get up to splash damage behind it himself. He's going to keep going in, but no, 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 not into the lib mine. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. Trigger gets a bit of a stiffy. Oh. 
Well, I, as I say that, he's getting on top of the, this army, but the reinforcement is there, the problem. At least the Liberators will fall. Archon somehow still alive. Very, very low. More Zealots are going to warp in. Archon gets saved. A lot of Stalkers went down in that fight as well. He's only he's lost 29 Stalkers this game. He's only got two of them. They're expensive units to replace. I mean, the supplies are still very even, and there's a fifth base on the way for Trigger. Um, whereas keep in mind, there's these big interruptions to Kelezer's income each time he's got to lift a base and move it because he's not playing the super macro game, right? He's not playing that I got a fourth, I'm building workers. He's just like, no, no, no. I've got, well, he's actually building three SCVs, but that's going to be the last three SCVs almost certainly because he needs another command center to make use of anymore. Uh, Zealot Archon coming forwards. The observer sees him in there and you can see Kelezer's trying to scout out. He's also sending a Marine out the left side of the map. And Kelezer, he's up against the Protoss, whose economy is getting too large. The mass Zealot has done a good job so far, but I do think Trigger should focus more on backstabs and getting a Warp Prism out at this point, and or adding some splash damage. But on a small map like Waterforts, it's very scary to do so. Widow Mines clear out the front row of Zealots, and this is not looking like the best fight for Trigger, especially with those EMPs. If they land on the Archons, that'll be huge. And the crazy thing here, Trigger's only on three gas. And he, he has no room to move into that next round of Splash. Those Archons, they're actually not hitting as well as we would have liked, though. There we go. That's a much better one. Archons are starting to pop, but Zealots are starting to find the economy Ooh. at the very least. But it's only five workers. This entire army from Trigger, it's evaporated. It's, yeah. But Pig, at least if you're a Trigger fan, he's got a thousand minerals in the bank. He can build stuff. That Amrata, though, that will go down. I think Trigger's going to have to give this base up, too. I don't, I don't think Plasma Shields does anything for you here. Like, it's such a, a slight edge that that gives you as an upgrade. And it's like, dude, that 200 gas could be a Robo Bay or a Storm upgrade. Drop another gas or two. And I really would like to see those Zealots doing more backstabs. Like, right now, even just individual Zealots, anything to pull Kelezer's attention away. Because Kelezer snapping this fifth is going to be massive for him. And there's no answer for Triggs. Trigg is in trouble right now. And Kelezer could even pick up and drop the main. Remember, there's only four Stalkers for anti-air control. And this gives Kelezer a complete map dominance. No splash damage, no scaling units coming out. That's a ball of Zealots, and Kelezer has the answer. Yeah, the Zealots do have plus three armor, but there's just so much of less of the stuff here. Third army supply in the good for Kelezer. Is now Trigger goes forward, gets a decent surround. What of mine's the splits are going to be a lot nicer this time. As we actually saw a Snipe go down on one of the Zealots, because why not as they run? But the EMPs, Oof. they're getting everything. What of mine's as well, and now it's a 40 supply deficit here for Trigger. And he just can't help but think if again just get a little more gas start to get storm even uh it's maybe not the best yeah. thing but you know at least that's what the tech you're going for is but at this point his army is not in the best spot he's trying to set up a concave set up a surround but emps they just pop the archon just like that there's nothing left for trigger anymore his, his army is dead yeah he's got stalkers cleaning up the widow mines from behind which is really well microed but he just does not have the numbers and keller zur here I gotta say, Kelezer's build was a little crazy. He just kept rallying Marine Tank Banshee for about five minutes straight, and it almost, I think, uh, was not the right way to follow up. But uh, Trigger did an amazing job to make the game this long. I gotta say, like, I'm sure there's people like, oh, why didn't he just make splash damage? And again, we were saying that as well, but you can't judge Trigger too fiercely. His game sense was in the gutter. He had so little vision in that game. He was so behind from the early game. So for him to have fought back and make it into that position in of itself, I consider a bit of a moral victory. At the end of the day, though, Kelezer goes out 2-0. GG. And man, that's, that's a...